The first time I went to Iraq was in April of 2003, and um, the invasion was already underway. My initial impression of the city was pretty much what you'd expect, which was sort of um, quiet chaos. You know, there was looting going on, but it wasn't, it wasn't terribly obvious. What I mostly noticed was the, the virtual absence of American soldiers, which was an odd thing because this was supposedly a city under occupation, but walking around it actually took me a couple of hours to even locate some American soldiers. So my early impressions of Baghdad was a city that did not have any kind of law enforcement going on and at the same time didn't have a very pervasive occupational presence. And a lot of Iraqis I met actually complained about that. There was one guy who said, listen, if you're going to occupy us, then occupy us. Meaning, you know, bring some law and order to the city so that we can feel safe. This was sort of the notion of my project in Iraq. I didn't want to be like a journalist in the sense where they have to chase after the violence when it happens because that's what the news media needs to actually showcase. In America, we have the, the saying, if it bleeds, it leads. And I found that to be true among the journalists that I, that, I, that I met in Iraq. My idea was I would randomly go places and record whatever was happening, and sometimes nothing would happen at all. Sometimes the, the area of Iraq where the particular army unit might be would be peaceful the whole time I was there. And in fact, reconstruction projects would be continuing. The next week, I'd go to a different neighborhood in Baghdad, and the army couldn't even go into a neighborhood without being shot at by snipers. So it, it, there was a huge amount of variation from one neighborhood to another. In my first trips, I used to do a lot of drawing on the streets in Baghdad. So I would just leave my, uh, my apartment in the morning with my drawing pad, and I'd basically head to neighborhoods that I thought were interesting to draw in. Um, and if I saw something interesting, I'd just sit down and start drawing. And this was always, it was, it was fun and a little nerve-wracking because I would attract a crowd of Iraqis around me within five minutes. So as I was drawing, I'd have maybe 12 people around and there'd be like a, a running commentary in Arabic about what I was drawing. And I don't really speak any Arabic, so I couldn't understand what they were saying. Uh, but every so often I would draw something and I'd hear the Iraqis go, which I wasn't really sure what it meant. But I think it, generally it was sort of like a, uh, I think they were basically saying that they, they were interested in whatever it was that I had drawn. And if anybody got in the way while I was drawing, I'd have a whole chorus of people screaming at them to get out of the way. A lot of times also Iraqis would want to be included in the drawing. So they would go out in front and pretend to hail a cab or whatever, do something so that I would add them into the drawing. So sometimes I almost felt kind of like a cultural ambassador when I was out drawing on the street. And I also noticed that, that the Iraqis would become very protective of me. So if they felt the situation was dangerous, they would say, listen, let's get out of here. Or, they would, uh, or in some cases, they would you know, want to take me to the, the tea vendor in the corner and buy me a cup of tea. And often one drawing would kind of lead to another.